Welcome back to Two Pixels Off. This is Mike Janda with my hoser friend, Brad Hussey, hailing from Canada in the cold plains of Canada. The the cold, yeah, foothills, plains of Western Canada. The tundra. Do you guys have tundra up there? I I grew up in the tundra. Welcome to Two Pixels Off, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs. Yeah, so you did where I'm in, in southern Canada. I did. So I'm I'm in southern Canada. Most people live like in the southern part of Canada, be, just because. Yeah. I don't know. That's just the way it is. Um, but I I grew up in like northern Canada, uh, literally tundra, permafrost. That you should be saying tundra a lot more because that sounds freaking legit. It is. Yeah, like I grew up in the tundra. That yeah. makes you sound like. I You're like a wild like, beast of some Brad sort. Brad Hussey, thunder from, from, the, from the tundra. Yes, thunder thunder so from the tundra. That's yes, epic. that's your stage name right there for WWE. If I was a WWE wrestler, no, let's be honest, yeah. it would be WWF wrestling because we're going old school. Oh, I'd we be are like, old school. Yeah, I'd be like, and the thunder from the tundra. Hustle yes. or something cheesy like that. It's so good. And Psycho Husky Maiko, dog. I'm your tag team partner. Yeah. Psycho Maiko. That's what it is. It's so that good. is a All right. Match. This has nothing to do with anything. Hopefully people <laughs> forgive us for the early love it. random banter on this episode of Two Pixels Up. We're excited to be with you again today. Thank you for listening to our podcast. As always, we highly, highly thank you for dropping a comment of appreciation in your favorite podcast platform, a review, five stars, share it with your friends, all the things that help the podcast out. We really, really appreciate it. And shout out to Wix Studio for making this podcast possible. We are thankful for Wix Studio, a no-code website builder built for agencies. It's beyond just the no-code build. It has all kinds of back-end business features that'll help you run a successful web design business. So shout out to Wix Studio. We're thankful for them making this all possible. Today, Brad, what are we talking about? Oh, one of my favorite things, which is taking a bit of a deep dive in the sales funnel, the sales and marketing, the funnel is what we're talking about. The funnel. The funnel. Okay, so in our last episode, we touched on the funnel. We kind of glossed over it because we were talking about, I think it was fastest ways to find clients, or maybe that was two episodes ago. But the fastest way to find clients, we talked about this idea of a sales funnel being three separate tiers. And the top tier of the funnel is about creating awareness for your brand or business. The middle tier is about making people consider you. They're in the consideration phase. So they know about your business from awareness. They trickle down into considering purchasing something from you or hiring you. And then we get to the final bottom of that funnel on them making a decision and how do we get them to choose you over the other people that are they're considering. So this is the traditional funnel. Now we glossed over this last time and I didn't freaking, I don't have a business degree and I didn't understand any of this stuff until I was in business running my agents. We were probably doing seven figures plus and I still didn't know what a sales funnel was. I didn't have an understanding of that. I didn't have a marketing background. I didn't have a business background. I don't know why I never saw it in a book or something. I read a lot of business books. Maybe it was so remedial for some people. They did thought they shouldn't even bother putting it in the book. But this concept is so, so important that we're going to dedicate this episode to breaking it down in a deep dive way and helping you understand this sales cycle of a sales funnel and how it can yep. improve your business. I got to say, okay. you mentioned something there uh, about, you know, you did you were doing business and your business was humming along and doing well, and you never even really knew this whole concept of sales funnels and whatnot. It, what I think the sales funnel, like these three key stages of awareness, consideration, and decision, they're kind of like, we have the laws of nature that just happen, whether or not you know about them. Mm. It's kind of like in business, there's also laws of nature or laws of business that just happen, whether or not you know about them. And once you 
recognize and acknowledge them and you start to work within these constraints or these laws of business, let's call it, then you can actually kind of perhaps uh, it's like you're not going against the flow or you're not going against the tide. You're actually kind of moving with these laws of nature or these laws of business. So once you recognize that there is an awareness stage and then there is a stage in the psychology where your client, your potential clients start to consider you amongst others. And then finally, there's a decision. Once you recognize that, you can almost harness it and then try to tilt the odds ever in your favor. Oh, is that, is that a quote from I think so. uh, Hunger Games? Hunger Games. Hunger Games. That's what May it is. May the odds ever they be in a, your favor. That's what it is. And they had a tundra in there for sure. A thunder the from Games. the tundra. It was so good. What a dark okay. movie. But let's carry on. I like on. this idea. <laughs> it was dark. I didn't see the new one yet. I got to see the, the latest one. Anyway, um, the prequel. Yeah. The This idea of a sales funnel. I love what you just brought up, that there are these universal business laws. That's and it. I had an experience when I started sharing content on social media. This was about five years ago or so. And I started writing content. And hardly any of my content is from anywhere else other than my own head and the stuff that I made up during my business. But I had people ping onto my comments saying, oh yeah, I love this concept. I've seen this before. And the first few times that that happened, I was like, how did you ever see this before? Because I invented this. I invented like, this, this is, idea. This is all me. It was all me. My own learning in the, the trenches of the real world until I started to realize what you just said, that there are these universal principles in business that mm-hmm. eventually in business, you're going to understand every single one of them. Now, it's easier to learn something from someone else who already learned it. It's easier to go that route. But if you don't go that route and you stay in business long enough, you're going to understand these principles because they are the universal principles of how business works. And a sales funnel is one of those things. So going into this sales funnel, this awareness, if we break out these three, let me go through these, Brad, Mm -hmm. on awareness, consideration and decision. The awareness stage is when the potential customer knows that they have a problem to solve. That's how I would define awareness. They know they have a problem to solve. They're aware of the problem. And they're aware of businesses out there that are solving the problem. And they become aware of you as a potential candidate to solve their problem. So that's the awareness, how I see that. The consideration is where they know that they have this problem to solve, like awareness, but now they're discussing potential solutions. They're considering the options. Who do we have that can solve this problem for us? That's what they start looking at. And then the um, decision phase, they know they have a problem to solve. They're discussing potential solutions and they're ready to make a decision on the solution. And that's where we capture them and turn, convert them into a buyer. What thoughts do you have to add to that breakdown, Brad? Yeah, well, it's like there's these universal laws of business, but, and like I mentioned, they kind of are just ever present and there, but it doesn't mean that they're happening to you. You actually kind of almost have to opt into that. Like if you have a business and it lives in your head, and you don't tell anybody about it, then nobody will ever become aware of your business. And then Mm -hmm. therefore will not move forward into potentially considering you and deciding to go with you. So you actually have to kind of opt into them. They are there, but it's almost like you have to step into it. And so that, that's a big thing. You know, a lot of people will ask uh, me, ask you in your community as well, you know, how do I find clients? So it's like, well, kind of the answer is take a couple steps back. It's yeah. how do the clients find you? Are you yeah. anywhere in the arena that they can become aware? Are you doing yeah. anything to make that, make yourself uh, available to them? And that's what we'll dig into yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's what we're going to dig into right now. Great segue into this awareness bucket. How do we create awareness so that people can find our business. And I'll tell you the first place that they're not going to look. 
Nobody is going to look behind your computer at the chair that's in your basement. That's not where they're looking to find you or become aware of you. And if that's your sales hope that you're sitting there in your basement running your creative business and you're hoping that somebody somehow finds you there, it is not going to happen. Yeah, you might get lucky once. You could even in a few years time get lucky twice. But the truth is, is that in this awareness phase, it's the top of the funnel and we have to pile as many people into the top of this funnel as we can and make them aware of our business so that they can drip out potential clients in the bottom of the funnel. So inside awareness, let's break this down into three segments inside this awareness bucket. You have connecting with people, educating people, and capturing people. That's this awareness. We want to connect, educate, and capture. You could call that the KEC, C-E-C, the KEC. Inside of awareness, you got KEC, capture or connect to educate and capture. All right, what are some of the ways that in your business, Brad, that you've dripped people into the top of your funnel through connecting them? Yeah. Or connecting with them. That's a great question. So I actually just recently wanted to find, I did an audit of my own top of funnel uh, myself because I wanted to know where are all these, but not where are all these people? Um, where are people finding me and my work, my business? Where are they coming mm. from? And And I'm capturing them. I'm capturing them across a multitude of areas. But I was like, I don't really know where they're coming from. I haven't really taken stock of it in a long time. So I actually opened up like a, yeah. a Figma file and made a flow chart. And then mm. I just went right through everything. I was like, where did this person come from? Okay, there, there, there. And I went through. So uh, for me, a big thing is through um, basically the content that I create online. So I will, uh, I'll create pieces that are online and you know, and people will find me through that. So that's, you know, through my YouTube videos, through blog posts, uh, I'm on other people's podcasts in addition to this one. And, you know, so there's lots mm-hmm. of stuff out there that I've created over the years. So that there's a ton out there that bring people through. Um, but uh, another big one for me is through um, actually talking to people. So going to, I'm about to go to, at the time of this recording, I'm about to go to the config mm-hmm. 2024 mm-hmm. conference by Figma in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've been reaching out to people online who are going, who've mentioned that they're going. I am planning on going to a couple networking events. I'm planning on being a social butterfly and, and capturing some content and connecting with people there. So I'm going to be, you know, I'm making sure my digital business card is set up properly so that they can, you know, when they connect with me and they have a, hopefully a pleasant exchange, they want to follow through on the, uh, you know, on the conversation. Yeah. So, you know, those networking events are a big, big thing. I don't go to a ton of them, but when I do go to them, I make them count. I try my best to at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, social media, obviously, you know, everybody's on social in some way, shape, shape or form. And so connecting with people, talking to people, starting conversations. Um, and, you know, if you have a service to offer, you know, actually, we talked about this a few episodes back about going for no and reaching out mm-hmm. to people, you know, that, that cold reach out or that even a warm reach out if you're on LinkedIn uh, and you see, ooh, there's a company here I'd love to get in touch with the partnerships manager or the marketing director or the CEO. Mm-hmm. I actually have two friends who are connected to that person. I'm going to ask for a warm connection. I've done that with you before. I wanted to get a guest yeah. in the community, uh, in the creative crew. And I was like, Mike, you know this guy. Could you put me in touch with yeah. him? And then you yeah. make that connection and it's already a, more of a, hey, you must be legit because Mike connected me with you rather yeah. than me reaching out and getting ignored. So those for yeah. me are big ones uh, yeah. that that have had an effect. Yeah, all those are good. Uh, those are the ways. So if we're, we're talking about the awareness funnel, the awareness part of the funnel on the top and connecting with people, you mentioned a bunch and I'll just summarize them. Mm-hmm. Networking events, like you're going to config conference, you're showing up. For yeah. those people, referrals is a huge one that let you connect with people. Ask your clients for referrals. And when somebody refers you, then yeah. act on building that relationship. 
that was the big one for my agency. It was the referrals and networking in person mm-hmm. things with clients. Not so much going to events, which I did do sometimes, but it was more like just being in front of my clients face to face, going yeah. to the lunch or the breakfast or the coffee or the whatever you're going to go and do with those clients. Social media, you mentioned, that's a way to create awareness. Cold yeah. reach out to people is a way to create awareness. You don't have a relationship there, but the more people you reach out to, the more people are going to become aware of your business. Yeah. Even if they don't reply to you, many of them are going to become aware of your business. I have people do this for better or worse. They email me seven times and they're always like I'm just bumping this up to the top of the inbox or whatever. Yeah. Finally, after seven times that they show up in my inbox, I recognize the name when it's coming in. A lot of times with these cold reach outs, I don't reply because there's no relationship based there and no referral, but I start recognizing the name. So they're getting awareness with me. Yeah. Um, paid ads is another way too. I know a lot of uh, creatives are running ads to a lead magnet or they're running ads even directly to their site or they're at least running retargeting ads. So if somebody yeah. ever hits their site or social media, the ad starts popping up in their in their social platforms. And those can be some, some ways. So that's the connect. We want to yeah. connect. That's the, the first C of the keck. The next yeah. one inside of awareness is to educate people, yeah. educate people. And you do this, Brad, like yeah. how many, how many, what percentage of your clients come to you because you taught them something about convert kit or email marketing or yeah. web design. And all of a sudden they're like, Hey, can you just do that for me? Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> that's why I kind of mentioned, like I mentioned, you know, creating content as part of the yeah. connecting thing, because for me, it almost bleeds into it because the amount of content that I've created and the amount of people who have connected with that content, when they book a call with me or send me an email or I get on like a Zoom meeting with them, they will often say, I feel like I'm in one of your videos. I feel like you're yeah. about to shoot a course right now or something like that because they are already familiar and connected with me and they almost kind of get a, an essence of my personality because I put so much yeah. into these videos. And, and so that for me is a big connection. So education, a huge part for me, education as marketing is for me the number one because yeah. I can just kind of lean into, I'll teach what I know as best as I can and just l- lean into it. And then people, if they're looking for that and they resonate with my style, they'll really connect with that. And yeah. it, it ultimately leads them into booking a call with me. And so to answer your question, almost every client, except for like my early, early clients before I even ever created content, uh, yeah. all are aware that you know, like, oh, I found you on that podcast or oh, I lo- I've been taking your email course or, you know, so-and-so booked an intensive with you and had nothing but mm. great things to say. Or I took one of your Udemy courses, you know, it's mm-hmm. just like it's 98 percent of people who work with me come from some form of my education content. Yeah, it's such an effective model. So we, we talked about ed- or social media being part of the connect bucket and it's also part of the education bucket, the social media content we're educating them. I would look at it two different ways. Like you can yeah. post portfolio examples on social yeah. media. You're just posting on Dribble, posting on Instagram. You're posting your work. You're posting your agency photos or whatever. You're posting stuff to create awareness. That's like brand marketing. And then thought leader marketing is the education style content that Brad's talking about doing them. Both of them can be effective in social media. A lot of big agencies that I follow and have admired for a long time, they're not sharing any educational content. You go to their Instagram and it's all like their after hours beer fest and their company party this and some inside shots of the owner's dog who's at the office that day. It's Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. That's the awareness connect piece but the awareness educate piece like you're doing also a super effective way to build awareness of your skill set. Yeah. Um, blogs and LinkedIn posts, another good one that kind of funnels into the social media long form articles, I would say we call that in person conversations. This is something you're going to the config event. You, undoubtedly, 
you're going to have some conversation with somebody where you start solving a problem for them and educating them on something. You'll be yeah. sitting there because I do this all the time, too. You're sitting there and somebody's like, oh, yeah, so you do convert kit. What's that all about? And you say, oh, this is this is what you want to use convert kit for because of X, Y, Z. And you start educating them that builds leadership in you and thought leadership that makes them see you as the expert and more willing to drip you down into their consideration part of the funnel. Yeah. Um, webinars, another way that people, people do this. Yeah. A lot of people do this. Free webinars, free sessions, free trainings. Um, I've done, I've played around with that for, for course marketing yep. before and had, had positive results on a lot of it. Sometimes not as positive that makes it worth doing it. Yeah. But positive results for sure. Yep. It's a good, it's a good. Okay. Method, the but... capture. Okay. Go ahead. Nope. I was just gonna say it's a good method and like every method, some of it can get tired and overused, but I don't think it makes it disappear because all the webinar is, is some sort of training, condensed training class. And, you know, the digital format was really widely adopted and a lot of people did it and it doesn't mean it goes away or it's not effective. In fact, it might be really effective for whoever's listening. Maybe you're not selling a course, but maybe you're selling a service and you want to teach like you know, let's use Wix Studio as an example. You're a web designer and you heavily rely on Wix Studio's platform, the builder and the business tools to deliver your services to your clients. Maybe you have a, do a webinar and maybe it is, let's even go, let's do two birds with one stone here. And let's say you got permission to film a live webinar at your local BNI or Chamber of Commerce or co-working space and mm -hmm. say, hey, we're doing, we're doing a live taping or filming of a webinar. And it's, a, it's an in-person too. And I'm going to be showing you how to set up your, you know, your landing page for your dentist website or whatever it is, yeah. whatever your, you know, your kind of, uh, training, uh, methodology is, or if you're teaching your client how to do something, or if you're showing them your five SEO things you need to include on your website, and here's how you do it in Wix studio, do a live webinar where it's broadcasting live to an audience and you do it in person. And so it creates a really cool dynamic. It's recorded. Mm. And so that, I mean, it's a great, it's a great method. I've done webinars a ton to various degrees of success. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's an excellent model for It is a good model. Educating. It's a good model to educate. It is that yeah. free training, free session to educate. And if you look at it as, this is when I think we, we look at it and think that it's not successful because we see the webinar as a decision part of the funnel. Right. When in reality, we should be seeing it as the awareness part of the funnel. Yes, yeah. they sat in that thing. And yes, there were 20 people on that webinar and you taught them stuff. But we label it as unsuccessful because we only had one person buy at the right. end. But if we look at it and say, wait, webinars and free training is all about top of funnel stuff for me. It's all about creating awareness of my expertise yeah. and the problems you have that I can solve for you. Now we drip them into consideration phase where we can nurture them until they're ready to buy. I think that's that's where I've gone wrong in the webinar yeah, mindset. Same. I look at it and say, oh, didn't get enough sales off of that. Didn't so work. it wasn't good. Shouldn't do it. Yeah, It's not a decision and, part of the funnel. Yeah. It's an awareness that's part right. of the funnel. It is. And yeah. then you change your KPIs uh, and your targets. If you see that, if you're if you are in the awareness part of the funnel, your targets and key performance indicators are going to be very different than if they're in the decision. The decision you want, it, it's sales. It's like money in the bank. It's like closed deals. It's invoices paid. It's, you know, that's what that key performance indicator. It's like, we want 10 sales from this uh, decision-making piece. But if you're looking at your webinar in what it really should be is in the awareness stage, then yeah. your KPIs are going to be like, okay, so the target might be, um, well, let's go back. So the KPI might be like, uh, we're going to determine the success of this webinar based on the number of registrations and live attendees. And maybe as a bonus, some sales would be nice, but that's not the purpose. It's just a bonus. Yeah. So then what you'd say yeah. in your targets is like, well, I want a hundred registrations. I want 40 live attendees and you know, two sales. Yeah, but but the main thing is because it's an awareness. What makes it a successful webinar is that now people are aware 
they've opted 100. into your list. Yeah, yeah, 100 of them. That's 100 potential yes. clients over the next, yeah. let's call it 500 days. Yeah, You know, not all of them, obviously, but over the next 500 days, maybe a certain percentage of those buy. Mm-hmm. And you could do it all in the background, which we can mm-hmm. get to as well. But that's, you know, your key performance indicators and targets will vary depending on which stage of the funnel you are in. Yeah. This for me, man, um, I hadn't thought about this until you and I started talking when you were talking and I was like, wait, that's the problem. Me with webinars, like uh, varying degrees of success. In hindsight, they were all super successful because I had a lot of registered people and I had a lot of people show up and I had a lot of people get into my email system as a result of running it. Yeah, the sales will come and they'll come over time as those people migrate into consideration and decision part of the funnel man that's yeah. an unlock i feel like my brain unlocked on webinars for a second nice. here so cool. it's good happy okay. to do that the last of the keck is capture um so it's awareness and capture we're out there we're connecting with people we're out there we're educating people next thing we want to do to be able to migrate them into consideration is we have to capture them somehow mm-hmm. and capturing them in Today's world usually means give me your freaking email address so that I can put you into my email system. Nobody's carrying around Rolodexes anymore. It's rare that somebody is texting a client to to keep to build a relationship with them in that text messaging thing. If you're Mm going to nurture someone over time, the least obtrusive way to do it is through email marketing. So getting that email email address. What are some of the ways that we capture people, Brad? How do you you do this? So how do you capture potential customers and, and get them into from awareness into consideration? Yeah. So this is like, I couldn't stress enough how important this part is. So as a creator, I understand how, and we call it creator now, like 10 minutes ago, it was blogger. And prior to that, it was, you know, online uh, website person. I have no idea. Like, there's no yeah. name, but we have this cool branded name. They're like, I'm a creator. Um, yeah. Which I'm cool with. Or it's an fun influencer. influencer. Influencer, that's the other one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it, which is like, you know, sure, okay. But the reality is, is like you, these, these are valuable um, things. And so anyway, as a creator who creates content and educates and whatnot, so owning your distribution is so important. And this is a big mm-hmm. thing like for influencers who are on like Instagram and social, they there's this like wise old saying, I don't know how old it is, but it's basically don't build your business on rented ground. So sure, it's great to have a huge Instagram following. It's awesome to have a big YouTube following. You know, I don't know if anyone uses Facebook anymore, but you know, like you can have all the followers, but if you have nobody on the list and the you know, one of those big social media companies decides that they don't like your content anymore or violates a usage or it violates the well, terms. You, it's yeah. happening right now in the US, TikTok. So the people TikTok. who invested all of their time and energy into TikTok in the United States, yeah. well, we have it passed that if it's not sold to a US company, the US part of TikTok sold to a US company by the end of the year, that we're going to not make it available to US citizens. So there's so the, they- the thing. The people yep. who who invested into the rented land yep. of TikTok, it's a leasehold. Should be panicking digital, right now. Yep, it's to get those leasehold. people out. Of, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like you don't yeah. own the space, you don't own the attention, you don't own the distribution. Sure, it's great you have influential voice on, let's call it TikTok or whatever social media platform. But if you don't own the distribution, and by owning the distribution, it's still relative. Uh, but having a list of email addresses who have consented for you to message them with marketing, Mm -hmm. promotional and educational content, i.e. newsletters, broadcasts, blog posts, just general updates on mass. That's owned distribution. Now I don't have a big Instagram following though. I'm trying to like do Instagram. Well, I recognize what really matters for me is to continue growing my email list because it's in that email list that almost everything uh, good in my business has come from that in terms of like revenue generation and passive income and connections and opportunities. 
It's owning yeah, that I'll give you my numbers, mm-hmm. um, my numbers on that. 1% of my Instagram audience has purchased my full freelance course. 20% of my email list has purchased my full freelance course. So Got there's the, the, the difference. The people who get into your email list are in the consideration and decision yeah. phase of the funnel. Yep. The people who follow you on a social platform, most of those people are in the awareness phase yeah. of the funnel. And, 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 you don't and the goal, it. get them yes. out of awareness and into consideration. Yes, yeah. and so your goal on social media isn't to buy my course, to hire my services, to to you know book a consulting call with me and pay a couple grand or whatever. It's get on the email list because once you're yeah. out of that like dangerous kind of like no man's land that is social media rented ground, leasehold space, yeah. leaseholded yeah. rented attention, and you have them on the list. And so long as you nurture that list right, which we'll get into, then yeah. it's like, okay, now you can rest because if you've got a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, good for you. That's wonderful. But what I really want to know is what have you done with that in terms of your email list? You should have a 10, 15, 20,000 person email list if you've played your cards right over time. And that's yeah. what I'm impressed by because that means something because you own that. Let's say you're using ConvertKit. ConvertKit decides they're going to sell to another company or you know they go down or they don't like your email content for some reason. I don't know. Export your CSV file. They've all given you permission yeah. to email them and take Put it somewhere it else. Put it in MailChimp. Put it in go. everywhere you want. Yep. Exactly. Yep. You just print it out on a freaking Rolodex and manually message them. Like that's yours. Yeah. So yeah. long as they don't unsubscribe. And so yeah. that really matters. So to yeah. answer your question to go back, I needed to go on a little tangent because I'm very passionate about it's this important. email marketing thing. Yeah. yeah. How do you capture that and get them into your email list? 100% through things like lead magnets, some form of incentive. Um, and those would be on, you know, landing pages, on opt-in forms, on modal windows, on slide-ins, on banners, like wherever you mm-hmm. want to put them, you know, you can do that. Heck, like I'm going to config and I've got a digital business card set up with the mm-hmm. QR code right there. Yes. And um, it's, that's where it's going to, it's a digital business card and I have it crafted so that the people who are going to be talking to me there and I'm going to be talking with, they're going to know me as a certain version of myself. We're going to be talking about a certain mm-hmm. thing. We're going to be talking about Wix Studio, Figma, uh, Figma to mm-hmm. Wix Studio plugin a lot. We're going to talk, talk about the community a lot and the podcast. They're going to scan that and they're going to opt into my list and they're going to connect with me and they're going to see mm-hmm. relevant pieces. Then I'll have an email and then I follow up on relevant you know, the, the relevant next step. So capture yeah. that email. You want their email. Yeah. You can do SMS marketing with their phone too, like a phone number, but email is kind of king still. It and is I think king. it will be for a yeah. long time. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very yeah. careful on who I let into my SMS marketing. I'm way less careful on my email marketing yeah. on who, who I allow to email me on my daily basis kind of yeah. thing. But only yeah. a couple of companies have my cell phone permission to text message me. Yeah. Okay. So I would say that that's the line in the sand. Like that is where you get them out of awareness and into consideration is by getting an email address and getting them into your email system. Now, all of a sudden you've crossed that awareness part of the funnel and you're mm-hmm. in consideration. Yeah. What happens in this consideration thing. They know about you. They know about your services. They, they sometimes in many cases have met you or seen enough content from you. They feel like they know you a bit. They, they have that awareness is built up. What is happening inside of consideration? You have to recognize that you're not the only person that they're thinking about. And you are so, and I I mean this, uh, well, but you're so un you're so forgettable to the person who just opted into your list. So you <laughs> speak for yourself, yourself man, <laughs> so, yeah. Brad, you can say, just say, I'm so forgettable I'm so to the pers- first person, Brad. <laughs> Come on. I, you know what? Sheesh. And to be fair, I, I approach it like that. I know that if they opt into my list and I don't follow up with them in, in my case, automatically through some form of evergreen content or automated email sequence that's personalized, 
If I don't do that within like three days on day four or five or, you know, day seven or beyond that, they're going to uh, not open it. They're going to unsubscribe. They're going to market as spam or they'll respond and be like, who the hell are you? And like yeah. you opted into my thing. Like, so I opted yeah. into 15 things that day and I unsubscribe from most things because it's all trash. Yeah. So you're forgettable. I'm forgettable. We're yeah. all forgettable when it comes to email yes. marketing and getting those. So don't <laughs> be forgettable. Stay top of mind. Yeah. Be relevant in your messaging. Follow up right away. Strike while the iron's hot. They opted into that lead magnet that said, give me the top 10 SEO tips to, in to install on my uh, Wix studio site for my, yeah. dental, my dental practice. Give them that right away. And then within the next day or two, send them your automated three-part follow-up sequence and then bring mm -hmm. them along, like kind of just draw them along gently through the funnel. And if you don't do that, they're going to forget you. They're going to unsubscribe. So yeah. that's staying on top of mind. You want to make sure that you're following up. You want to make sure that you're sending them relevant content at a cadence that is going to keep them top of mind that yeah. keep you top of mind and that is going to nurture that relationship over time yeah. for some people it's quicker and for some people it's a little more drawn out and slower there's a longer sales cycle you know it really depends there but you have to stay top of mind send relevant content you know be patient with it and you know allow that relationship to nurture you need to have that in place yeah i love the the nurture length of seven touch points. I, I love the seven, the rule of seven in marketing that you have to have seven interactions with a brand before they are willing to buy from you. You've built enough brand trust that they're willing to buy from you. And I look at this all the time and I remind my community of this and, and people that I coach that, okay, we had inside of awareness Mm -hmm. We had, let's say they saw your social media post, then they watched a webinar with you, then they saw a YouTube video. Now we have three touch points and then you got them to sign up for a lead magnet. Now you have four touch points and they're in consideration phase with four touch points. And now you need three more while they're in consideration before that person has considered you long enough to convert into choosing to buy from you. And so I, I think that this is the staying top of mind game. What are those three extra touch points that we can have with them? Well, comment on their social media posts, mm -hmm. ask them to visit another webinar. You can have more educational things. You can send out your email newsletter with educational content. It's not about going for the ask. It's about going for the, hey, don't unsubscribe, keep considering me. That's what's mm -hmm. happening. I do this with my newsletter that I post every weekend. I send out a newsletter to my community, my email community, and it's always an article that is like, here's some value. Here's a script that you can use with a client. Here's a free worksheet for some situation that you might be in or whatever. I, I give value, but I rarely am like, hurry now, sale ends tomorrow on my course for whatever. It, it, there are times Black Friday and things are like a flash sale when I have something like that. But my consideration nurture emails are just more value, more value, more value. I don't want to lose the subscriber. I want to continue to nurture that subscriber through the three to seven more touch points that I need before they can drip into deciding on me, that last part of the funnel. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, I'll add one more thing to that is the way I tend to, to approach that is an easy format to follow would be something like, you know, they land on your landing page with a lead magnet of some sort, you know, they're trading their email and attention for something in exchange. So you give them mm -hmm. that something. And for me, the follow-up, I like to use like a, an email course model, you know, like a five-part email course. And it could be like one email a day for five days. Uh, and yeah. it carries them through something. It's not going to be relevant for everybody's situation, but if especially if it's an educational thing or you're trying to help them solve a problem that takes a little bit of effort, break it down into five easy-to-do chunks that they can do in like five minutes a day and 
break it through into five parts. And by the last one, you say, you know, I always like to say, hey, thanks for letting me borrow your inbox this last week. I really appreciate it. Um, just going to give you a break over the next few days, but look for an email for me, you know, next week, uh, where I'm going to, uh, introduce you to something that I've been working on that I think is really going to help you solve X problem. And then yeah. your next sequence is more of a soft pitch sales sequence offering mm -hmm. your services. And if it's a service that costs, you know, a higher ticket price, it, the sale is to get on the call, not to give me your credit card and invest $10,000. It's get yeah. on the call and then we can talk and then we can be normal people. If yeah. it's like a product, a software, a subscription, something that's easy to buy off the shelf, productized service, then it's a sale. You know, you're often yeah. asking. It's for a transaction, sale. transactional transaction. style. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I intentionally price my courses this way. My, my courses, I mean, my freelance course is 40 hours and has... 60 something downloadable templates, all from my agency contract proposal templates, processes, my SOPs, like it's so freaking packed. It should be thousands of dollars, yeah. but I intentionally price it where I do in the hundreds of dollars because I want it to be a transactional sale and not a, I need to have a 15 minute phone call with Mike, or I'm not going to buy his $10,000 course, even mm. though it will yield that level of results to my client. I would rather have the transactional sale at this phase of my career. So yeah. I, I think that um, transitioning somebody from consideration into decision, there are a bunch of different ways that that can happen. It can be through asking for the sale via a transactional email, click here to buy now. It can be a sign up for a free consultation where you spend 15 minutes on a call with them and then you're resolving concerns because it's a higher ticket purchase. Mm -hmm. How many of your, you, you do, uh, let's say a $10,000 project for a client, Brad, have you ever landed one of those with a new client without having to get on a phone call with them at some point? No, never. No, it's always on the, yeah. on the phone, always a discussion. And to some, to some degree of l like length of conversation, you know, if it's like a bigger ticket, like a $10,000 website service, you know, that's mm -hmm. a conversation. That's like a little pushback, some here are my roadblocks and hangups and mm -hmm. I got to think about it and these sorts of things. Uh, if it's a, you know, $2,000, you know, $2,500 intensive where it's a one day service, I even don't offer it where you can buy it on the site. I, I make it, yeah. you have to book a call, but you have to know the call's short. It's like 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. they already come preloaded with all of the understanding and knowledge, like all the information's there. They're not trying to find out how much is it and how much effort it. it's like, it's one day, it's $2,500. You need to be a ConvertKit user. You need to have an email list. You need to have this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like this is not for you. And I'll find out really quickly when they book the call. And I'll either just say, Hey, look, this is not for you go check out my free mm -hmm. YouTube video on how to set it up yourself. Or I'll go, great. So do you have any questions? Or I'll give you my link for you to agree to the contract, make the in terms and services, mm -hmm. make the transaction and put your credit card in mm -hmm. and boom, pick your day. And that's transactional, but it's mm -hmm. after like a, you know, a 10 minute quick, like, Hey, what questions do you have? You're good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This, let's do it. Here's my link. Yeah. I think you're right on the cusp of transactional. I, I would say anything under than a thousand dollars as a purchase is something that somebody will purchase through a buy now button. Yeah. There's that threshold. When you get to like the two grand, 2,500 kind of range, this is just my own perception of entrepreneurship. But I think that that's kind of the range where you start having to, you'll close a lot more if you do the 15 minute phone call than you will if you just have it be a buy now twenty four ninety nine price click. Yep. Um, anything over that, like I never greenlit. We did a lot of six figure, five and six figure projects at my agency, and it, and it was like sometimes multiple discovery meetings and resolving concerns and refining the scope before you land the three hundred thousand dollar e commerce website. There's a lot of 
investment that goes into that sales process to get them to make a decision mm -hmm. to choose you. Um, yeah. So the higher the price point, the more time you're going to risk in the transaction, getting that transaction to happen. Yeah. Okay, so here we are. We have now awareness with our Keck, connect, educate, and capture. When we capture that email address, that's what usually is the trigger to know that those people are now in consideration mode. Consideration mode is all about us staying top of mind and continuing to educate and provide value to their life in some fashion so that they consider us until the moment when they're ready to make a decision. And then they go from that consideration phase into the decision phase. And depending on our price point, sometimes that is some kind of in-person communication. And sometimes it can just be as easy as putting a buy now button inside of your website or an email or something to try and get them to make that trigger of a decision to happen. Um, but that's the that's the sales funnel. What did we miss on this sales funnel idea, Brad, that we should make sure people understand? I think I'd leave you with a thought is that sales funnel is a very common term. But as you can imagine, you know, a funnel is something that kind of spills out at the bottom or, you know, you take a funnel and you pour water at the top. It's going to capture mm -hmm. the water and then it's going to spray it out the bottom. I feel like it's a little bit of a broken model or not model, but uh, metaphor. And here's why, mm. because it's assuming in that funnel, everything that comes in goes out the bottom, mm. but it's not true because most of what goes in doesn't come out the bottom. If the bottom is assuming that is sales. So it's yeah. actually a small percent. Most of it let's call it spills out the sides and mm -hmm. is, is, you know, gone. So, and then, and also implies that at the end of the funnel, you, the, you captured the sale and then it's gone. I feel like it's a bit of a broken metaphor because like this, it's so wrong in this sense. What I like to call it is a, um, it's not an as easy of a metaphor to remember, but it's like more of a, a marketing machine you know, like a cyclical mm -hmm. machine. And so what happens is maybe a funnel is a part of it, but it's inside of like a container of some sort that uses like siphoning, let's say for using liquid and funnels and water, you know, <laughs> here it is. This just keeps getting more complicated, but keep going. I'll keep get going. To say, hang on. We've with got, me. we got a We've machine got siphoning funnel and holes in the funnel. Motion. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. You're in like a bathtub and here it is. Here's a yeah. bathtub. Okay. And you had a, okay, you're good. pouring water in, in the top of the funnel. Some of it's spilling out. Some of it's going through, but there's holes in the funnel too. And so there's a lot of okay. water being spilled out into the bathtub, which is uh -huh. then feeding the water into the top of the funnel again. So you want to be able uh -huh. to take that water and keep recycling it back into the top of that funnel. And so uh -huh. basically what you want is like an ever moving system that keeps that water moving and not stagnant. So whatever goes in the top comes at the bottom. Most aren't going to buy, but all of them end up back into your evergreen content that is always keeping you top of mind always. And then in yeah. those evergreen pieces of content, there's always opportunities to book the call, buy the course, uh, sign up for the you know, the paid session, subscribe to your service, whatever it is. And that to me is a more, that's a perfect model. And it, the funnel is just looking at one piece of it, but it's all a part of one kind of like ever moving cycle. We're missing the siphon part siphon, in, yeah. in the standard funnel. So what I like about that, if we go back to what is the funnel, it's mm -hmm. awareness, consideration, decision. So you have some people who came into the top of your funnel at the start and they went through consideration and decision and did not decide to choose you. Yeah. So now they spill out of the sides or whatever, and they're just getting funneled back into awareness again. And maybe it's awareness of some other service that you have to offer or some other product or something. It's a new offer yep. that you're offering to people. And then you're gonna transition them again 
awareness, mm-hmm. consideration, decision. I love that, Brad. I think you you nailed it. You were going way complicated, like a Canadian. You guys are super educated and stuff up there. And I was like, I don't know if he's going to bring this home. But then you did. It was freaking magical. It's the it was thunder, magical. thunder from the, the tundra. Thunder, the thunder from the tundra. Yep. Brad Hussey. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening to Two Pixels Off on this session about sales funnels. We love having you as listeners. Please leave a comment drop a review and check out our podcast powered by company Wix Studio for uh, making this possible. We're thankful for them and we will see all of you pixels in the next episode coming soon.